Hi, welcome to Briones Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and if you want to know what separates high level players from the lower level players, let's jump right in. All right, so when we talk about higher level play, the high level players have great skills, great paddle control, but one thing that really never gets talked about is their footwork. In this video, we are going to talk about how working on more efficient and better footwork will totally transform your game and help your consistency and overall confidence when you're hitting each shot. Now in this video, we are gonna specifically talk about footwork up at the non-volley zone line. So when I am up here at the non-volley zone line and I have my opponent right in front of me, I have to get ready for really two shots, either a dink or a volley. So I'm going to be in a good athletic stance and as we're dinking up here, obviously you're going to try to make your opponent move and put them in uncomfortable positions when you're hitting your dinks. And that's what they're going to be trying to do to you as well. So in this video, we are going to go over three different movements up at the non-volley zone. And really, anytime you move your feet, it's going to fall under one of these buckets. So now let's start with the first one, and that is the lunge step. So this is probably the most common one in the game when you're up at the non-volley zone, and we are going to be lunging, lunging either forward or to the left or to the right. So obviously here I can, you know, dink all the balls here, right? But if the ball is way over to my left, I don't want to be leaning, okay? And this is a footwork issue. If you are leaning for the ball or you're stretching and reaching, you're not going to have an accurate shot and that's how we make errors and pop up the ball. So if the ball's way over here, I can hit a lunge step where I just come and spread my out side leg out to my left here. So if it's over here, I can do this. So just working on basic footwork like this, I can also with my right leg go out and lunge step to my right so I could get closer to the ball um, in balance. And again, this is going to take some flexibility when you're hitting a lunge step to get to the ball, but this is something that you can practice. So remember, I'm gonna go either to the right lunge step and get balls out here and then I can go back into ready position or go towards my left and get a ball out here. Now sometimes there's balls that are really short into the non-volley zone, right? There's no need to run in there and then get it and then pop back out, right? You can reasonably, um, most players can just with one step just get that ball right here or right here, okay? So I'm doing that with my right foot. You can also do it with your left foot. The biggest thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're nice and balanced. Here we go. Okay. All right, that was a good example there. There we go. There we go. That was a really tough one. Okay. There we go. There we go. Good. Okay. Now, why don't you hit me a couple like really short ones and I'm gonna lunge step forward. Okay. Okay, even the really short ones, right? Just in one lunge, I can get to pretty much every ball. All right, so now let's go into the second footwork pattern and that is the shuffle step. Now, I would say this is the one that I use the most often because I like being light on my feet and I really like getting closer to the ball, having a good contact point out in front, which is really important, and that I'm not reaching, okay? With the lunge step, you, you know, I could get to these balls here and I could be well balanced, but you know, that puts a lot of pressure on my quads and, and my leg muscles. So you could definitely do that, but for me, I rather just shuffle like this and then hit the ball right here. And then after I hit the ball, the only thing is you gotta make sure that you shuffle back. If I'm moving here to my right, I can just shuffle here, boom, then shuffle back. Okay, so this is called the shuffle step and you definitely wanna be working on this. Start with your inside leg if you're moving left, okay? I'm gonna move my right foot over towards my left foot. So like this way, and then I'm just going to slide and move my left foot out of the way. So I'm bringing my right foot in and then I'm pushing my left leg out. All right, so I'll show you one more time. I'm moving my right foot in and I'm replacing it where my left foot was, right? 
right there, just like that. And then when I come back after I hit my shot, it's the, just the opposite. I'm gonna move my left foot towards my right, okay? Because I'm gonna have to go towards my right and I'm going to replace where my right foot currently is and I'm gonna move it in like that. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look like this, hit it there, boom. And then if I have to go this way, it's gonna go look like that, okay? Okay, so now you're gonna move me here and we're gonna work on our shuffle step footwork. Here we go. Okay, that was lunge step there, shuffle, Shuffle, okay, shuffle, again, shuffle, good, shuffle back, shuffle, that was a tough one, shuffle and a lunge. You know, sometimes you're gonna get balls that are really, really wide to the left or to the right. You might have to use a combination like that last one. I might have to shuffle and really lunge out here or shuffle to my left and then get low and lunge out there. Show you a couple more, here we go. Didn't have to move for that one. Really have to shuffle for that one. Okay. Where you're gonna see this shuffle step really come in handy is when you're digging cross court. So in this example, we are on the odd side and with the angle, when you're digging cross court, the angle opens up and it could pull you across the non-volley zone and out you know, towards the sidelines. So with the lunge step, if she's hitting that corner, I'm not gonna be able to get there. The shuffle step is the most efficient and the only way you're going to be able to get to really wide balls. Again, if I could develop a more pronounced and more aggressive shuffle step, I could take a bigger, even bigger shuffle step so I could get further over, get in good position, and then again, I'm moving back. Okay, so here we go. Back in the backhand. That was a good dink there. Shuffle step there. Good. Shuffle. Good. Okay. Shuffle step there. Shuffle again. Shuffle and lunge. Okay. Here we go. That was more of a lunge there. Shuffle. Shuffle. Okay. One last tip I do want to mention here is you can see me shuffle, get out in good position, I'm well balanced, and as I hit that dink, on my way back, I'm using this momentum here to shuffle back. So it should look like this. Boom, you come out, hit that ball, and then you come back in. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more time. Here we go. Little shuffle step there. There you go. Ooh, that was a tough one. Good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, little shuffle step there. That was a good one. Okay. So remember, you're gonna be doing this a lot when you're dinking cross-court, especially if players are going to be dinking cross-court from you. All right, so now let's jump into the third and final footwork pattern, and that is the drop step, okay? We handled what happens and how do we get to balls, you know, going to our left and to our right, we can use a lunge step or a shuffle step, but at times we are going to have to back off the non-volley zone line. So when are we going to have to do this? Times when we are getting balls really close and deep dinks to this non-volley zone line, right? Sometimes players are going to be hitting us really deep aggressive dinks. What you can do is either you can volley them low like this, or you can drop step back, okay? And what this will do, if you drop step here, so let's say um, a ball's bouncing somewhere over here and I'm coming back like this, this creates space, all right? Let the ball sit up a little bit so that I can control it here. And the big thing here when you drop step back is you hit that ball and you get right back in front. So let's focus here on the backhand. It could look like this. I could just drop this left foot back like this. And then see, I'm like kind of sliding my right leg back. So it could look like that, like this, like that. And then here and back up. Or I can come back with my right leg first and then do that, okay? So on my forehand side, on this side, it could look like this, where I could just drop back with my right leg and I have my momentum moving backwards 
and then the ball's bouncing and then I can hit it out in front. Remember, anytime we are using a drop step, we gotta make sure that we are going early as the ball's traveling and then we are balanced, well balanced and we can hit it out in front of us because the contact point needs to be here for maximum control. So if you're gonna use a drop step and let balls bounce, that's totally okay. Make sure you drop step early, hit it, and then again, it's very important after that shot that you close back in. Here we go. All right. Okay. Took that one out of the air. Okay. Didn't have to move for that one. Didn't move back a little on that one. Okay, step in a little bit. Okay, took that one out of the air. Okay. Okay, that was a drop step there. Drop step back. Little lunge step there. Okay, here we go. Okay, drop step back. That was nice and controlled. Out of the air, here we go. All right. Okay, holding my position here at the line. Stepping in there. Little drop step there. Okay, out of the air. Here we go. Drop step there. There you go, that was a good one. Okay, out of the air there. Drop step back. Drop step back again. Okay, here we go. Drop step back. Drop step back. Okay, notice how if I drop step back, I'm going to come up immediately right after that shot, right? Drop step back, okay? So this is definitely going to be a feel thing. I'm seeing the ball come off my opponent's paddle and I'm judging how deep it's gonna go and how high it's gonna go. Sometimes I'll decide to take it out of the air here, but other times might be a little bit low and the drop step it might be a better choice because I'll have more time to hit it. It's dropping, I can let it get to the apex. I'm under control, I hit the ball, and then I come back up. Now we're gonna show you one more time. Okay, good. Out of the air. Okay, good. Drop step back. Okay, here we go. There you go. That was a good dink there but I close back in, even if I drop step back, gotta make sure I close back in, okay? Good, out of the air, oh, net cord. Here we go again, drop step back, uh, off the bounce, another one off the bounce, little drop step back, okay. So again, it's going to be a little bit different each and every time, so get out there and practice, right? We have the lunge step, we have the shuffle step, and we also have the drop step. All right, so now for the bonus footwork pattern, and we are going to talk about the cross step. You actually see a lot of this also in higher levels, but there's a little bit of nuance, and I'm going to help you you know, decide and make good decisions on when you're going to cross step. So what does the cross step look like? It looks like when we're here, we're dinking, you know, cross court, we're getting sent really wide balls and I actually cross over with my right foot and I'm in this position and I hit the ball like this and then I come back. Now, a lot of players will ask me, well, you know, is that a good thing? I would say, you know, as long as you're doing it efficiently and it's not, you know, setting yourself up to get in trouble, that's okay. Now, what I recommend and what I do myself is on really wide balls, if I could get there with a shuffle step first, I'd rather do that. Okay, some balls are really, really wide, and if you have to cross step, you go ahead and cross step. Now, again, this ball that you hit has to be, you know, you have to hit an unattackable ball back, because if you cross step and then it pops up, you know, your back's to the net. So you definitely need to keep the ball down if you're gonna be cross stepping. But we're gonna dink cross court here. I'm gonna show you my shuffle step and also some mixed in cross steps so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, that was a really tough one here. Shuffle step there, shuffle step there, shuffle step again, cross step there, little drop step there, cross step, 
shuffle step, okay? Shuffle step, okay? Cross step there, cross step there, okay? A little half volley there, shuffle step there early, okay? Cross step, shuffle, okay? Ooh, big, big shuffle. Okay, so those are some really tough dinks. Now, this takes a lot of practice, all right? The biggest thing is we wanna move early, whether we're doing a shuffle step or a cross step. We need to move early, be well balanced, hit the ball, and then return back to our ready position. All right, so thanks so much for watching this video. Footwork is so important. If you look at all the top players play, they have exceptional footwork. Remember, footwork is so that we can get closer to that ball, have good contact points out in front, and that we're well balanced and there early so that we can execute our shot. If we are leaning or we get to the ball late, of course we're gonna have errors. We're gonna pop the ball up or we're gonna hit the ball into the net. Remember, if you work on these footwork patterns, this game and dinking in general will become a lot easier and you're gonna have more confidence in your shots. Again, thanks so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. For exclusive pickleball content from me, check out briannaspickleball.com. For awesome pickleball paddles like this one, make sure to check the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.